Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you so much for submitting questions for my Walking Dead Q&A today. I know a lot of you had questions about Netflix availability in other countries. You will have to check with your local streaming services just because it's different in every country. Like Netflix in the UK is very different from Netflix in the United States. Everyone should have a pretty okay time finding a way to watch it before the season five premiere. So we should all be good. And thank you for your bonus video suggestions too. I think like a Michonne slice and dice video is what's gonna be next. But if you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, my name is Charlie. I'm gonna be doing a whole bunch of Walking Dead videos this season, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. I have a link to my schedule for the fall for all the videos in the description. So just a general spoiler warning for everything through season four as we start doing questions. All the season five questions that I answer are pure speculation. So technically I don't consider them spoilery, but you know, mild spoiler warning. Okay, so here we go. Question number one, Nick Nax asks, was Seth Gilliam's character already introduced? Who is he and what's his connection to Rick's group? Yes, they introduced him at Comic-Con as Father Gabriel from the comics. He's playing a comic book character, but that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be exactly like the Father Gabriel in the comics. You guys totally know the drill with that. You know, the show changes things all the time from the comics. Of all the new characters that are coming in season five, he's like one of the two that I'm really excited to see. I'm a big fan of Seth Gilliam, and based on the types of characters he's been playing more recently, like on Teen Wolf, I'm interested to see how he handles spirituality inside the Walking Dead universe. His Teen Wolf character is like this soft-spoken mystical healer, so of course they're going to make him the spiritual guy on Walking Dead. Even if they didn't make him a man of God, he'd probably still come off as the spiritual one. The other big character that I'm really interested to see though is that crazy looking policewoman that's been harassing Beth in the trailer. Right now I'm thinking of her as Lady Negan, but that's not who she is. Like they didn't gender bend Negan. In terms of connection to Rick's group, I feel like Seth Gilliam's character is going to be totally different from his comic book version, so I don't want to make too many predictions about him. I know there was a lot of speculation about him possibly being the one that took Beth, but based on what we've seen in the trailers, I don't think that's the case. On to question number two, Cameron Cicernos. How do you think they'll give significant screen time to each character this season? There was one point in the trailer when there were over a dozen on screen at the same time. So the short answer is, is that not everyone is going to get, you know, good screen time. They'll basically focus on like three, four, five main characters and then just hit everyone in the group scenes. If you remember the solo episodes from season four, I don't think that they're going to do a lot of those. I think that as the group moves around though, the camera is just naturally going to focus on three or four specific people more than others. Beth is like the one exception to that because her story is taking place in this other different area like that creepy hospital. It seems like she's going to be there for at least the first half of the season. So she's definitely going to be getting a lot more screen time than she has in the past. But question number three, Neta de Toro asks, I'll never understand why it's okay to have zombies with exploding heads, but they can't drop F-bombs. Yeah, this is like a weird standards and practices thing. Networks have those people who tell showrunners what it's okay to leave in. The standards and practices people are trying to help the networks not get fined by the FCC. That's just in the United States. Each country is just a little bit different. So if they think the FCC is going to complain about a certain word or a certain level of violence or sex, they'll ask the showrunner to remove it. There is absolutely no logic to it. Standards change from year to year all the time. Sometimes it'll get more strict as time goes on. The DVD is the exception to that. AMC can slap a warning label on it and then just leave everything in. It's the same deal with the way movies get rated in the United States. It's totally messed up and it kind of sucks. But question number four, Gab Borgia asks, do you think that spoilers hand will be cut off in season five? I just omitted the name because most people don't know who that person is. No, I don't think that's going to happen, mostly for sake of practicality, but I think that someone on set was playing a prank one day. For people that don't know, there's a major character in the comics that loses a hand, but the show just hasn't done it yet. So recently, Norman Reedus tweeted a picture of a chopped off hand with a ring on it, and everyone went crazy. What I think happened is Norman Reedus was just having fun on set one day. They chopped like a random character's hand off, and he was just having a little bit of fun with the audience. I think they're going to do that scene as a wink to the comic book fans, but it's not going to be a main character. I know a lot of you are asking, you know, why wouldn't they do that? If it was in the comics, you know, why not do it? Mostly for sake of practicality, just because it takes a lot of time to get an actor in prosthetics and then a lot of money to digitally support it with digital effects. It just makes filming with that character as time goes on way more expensive. And even though Walking Dead does make a crap ton of money, it's like the most profitable show on cable right now next to Big Bang Theory. It's also one of the most expensive shows to produce. For example, AMC spends more money producing Walking Dead than HBO spends producing Game of Thrones. I think the numbers I heard last year were that it cost about $4 million to make an episode of Walking Dead, and it made about $12 million in like ad sales and all the various stuff. So at the end of the day, it still made $8 million. But question number five, Darcy Peterson asks, 
During the governor's attack on the prison, do you think that he would have really let the survivors leave the prison unharmed if they chose to give it up? I actually, I don't think the governor knew completely what he was going to do until he just started talking to that megaphone. I think he'd really only thought through his plan up to the point of the megaphone and the threats. And then something inside him just snapped while Rick was trying to reason with him. Had Rick and the survivors chosen to leave on their own free will, I still think the governor would have found a reason to go after them. I also think that prison would have totally turned into another Woodbury situation. So either way, the governor would have ended up going crazy again and killing a bunch of people. I just like the way they implied, you know, when they gave us that governor's story arc, that there was no way he was going to be able to leave that lifestyle behind. But question number six, JG Cujo asks, Everyone has been talking about Daryl's character maybe being gay. Do you think that he is? Is there something going on between him and Carol? Yeah, I saw some of the news about this. I'm not really sure why people thought that he might be gay. Maybe just because he hasn't had sex with a lot of women. I have to say that it is okay for, you know, a character to not have sex with every woman that passes his field of vision. If you ever watched Arrow, Stephen Amell said that he actually talked to the writers because Oliver Queen, the Green Arrow character, basically was having sex with every woman that came on the show that he was not related to. And it became like a big problem. It was really funny. That's the weird thing about TV. Either there's like too much sex or not enough sex. There's never like the right amount of sex. But think about it this way. Daryl has never really struck me as being a ladies man. I don't think he's gay. I think he's just got this undiagnosed personality disorder that causes him to recoil a little from the thought of intimacy. And just to clarify, I don't think that he's asexual. That's basically like the absence of sexual thoughts during normal circumstances. But the zombie apocalypse is the opposite of normal. Right now where the character is, he's just starting to think of the survivors as his real family. Like he and Rick just acknowledged each other as brothers in the season 4 finale. Like that's how long it's taken. I think what we'll see this season is him just opening up to people a little bit more. If that continues, then of course the natural progression would be for him to develop a more intimate relationship if the opportunity presented itself. I know there is some Carol Daryl shipping out there, and I do see it a little bit in some of the subtext, but I don't feel like the show is going to do any of that. I think both those characters really care about each other, but I don't think they think of each other as like sexual partners. What we might end up seeing in like a future season, if Daryl continues to develop his personality, is just open up and have a sexual relationship with like a guest character or something like that. There has been some official word though from Scott Gimple and crew. He, they basically said at no time during season five are they going to address Daryl's sexuality, which I think was a funny way to respond to all the is Daryl gay questions. But it's just something that they don't find interesting to talk about, so they're not going to spend any of their time writing episodes dealing with that. So the short answer is, is that Daryl's brain is just too fried to deal with relationships or the idea of being intimate with someone right now. But onto question number seven, Kieran McFadden asks, do you think they'll kill off a main character like Daryl or Glenn? Well, neither one of them is completely untouchable, but I'm pretty sure, like definitely sure, they're not going to kill Daryl off. He's one of the most popular characters right now, and I don't think they're going to go into Game of Thrones territory where just like anybody can go at any minute. The first person to go will probably just be one of the more minor main characters. Obviously, there have been a lot of Glenn rumors about him leaving the set, saying goodbye to the cast. There have even been like some Maggie pregnancy rumors. I have no way to confirm any of these, so I'll just say, you know, I would not be surprised if they didn't kill anybody in season five. It seems like they want to keep the show going as long as possible, and the easiest way to do that is to just keep everyone alive. I am going to start laying bets on Bob going, though. I feel like they're going to give him like a really big hero moment to prove to himself he's not terrible. And then right away, a bunch of walkers are going to swarm him. So, you know, he could die a hero instead of just being an alcoholic. I also think there's going to be a few red shirts in the premiere. So keep your eyes peeled for them. They're always the first ones to go. That's why they're called red shirts. On to question number eight. Fraser Chard asks, is there any truth to the statement that Robert Kirkman wants the show to run for 12 seasons? So every time I've heard Kirkman talk about the series, you know, first he talks about the comic and he says, I'm going to keep making it till people stop buying it, which is basically forever. And on the other side of that, he says similar things about the show. The problem is, is that because TV is so much more expensive to produce than the comic, eventually the show will become too expensive for them to keep making. That's what the spin-off show is for, a way to continue the show without having to pay crazy money for season 20. What happens is, is like as you get on in seasons, actors' salaries rise, so they would be paying them like millions and millions of dollars. You know, it'd be way too expensive to keep making episodes. But on to question number nine, this is actually a funny one. Braiders asks, are you sponsored by Razer now? I keep seeing that Razer headset a lot. No, that's totally funny. It's just super boring, like this background, and I just wanted some color in it. And those are the headphones that I wear whenever I edit my videos. It would be pretty sweet to have a sponsorship. Right now, you know, absolutely no one is paying me to do anything. So anytime you see something in a video that looks weird or I mention something a lot, it's just because that's what's stuck on my brain at the moment. 
I will say there are a lot of people like buzzing in my ear about, you know, businessy YouTube things. If there's ever like something I think that you guys will like really enjoy and the opportunity prevents itself, then I might do like some sort of ad related thing, but that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon. Even PewDiePie doesn't do a lot of like straight up ads. He does like really big integrations with Humble Bundle and other services like that, like giving out discount codes. It's way less invasive. It's like a whole different part of the platform. So I just let other people who care about that stuff deal with it. But onto question number 10, Drake Henderson Dumont asks, how do you think the TV show will end and will Rick ever die? It would be funny if he was immortal, like some crazy thing happened and he just could never die like Captain Jack. What I think is really going to happen is they'll just end it in some ambiguous way where one or a couple of the characters just keep traveling around trying to survive. They'll try to like leave it in a way that lets you know that things will just generally continue. Like life will just go on. I do definitely think that a bunch of main characters will be dead at that point though. I mean, it'd be disingenuous if they all got to live for 12 seasons. I would like to see Beth, you know, maybe Carl among the last people standing. That would be like one of the less depressing endings. If you wanted to be super hardcore though, you'd kill everyone else and let Rick survive. I don't think that he would want to live if everyone else he cared about was dead. In fact, that's actually kind of what ended up happening to the governor after season three. So now just a couple really big reminders, bonus videos for Walking Dead on Sundays now. My next one's going to be for Michonne, so be sure to subscribe to get it. I'll also be live tweeting some of the episodes when they get here. I'm pretty good about not being spoilery, but all the links for my social stuff are in the description below. And congratulations to this week's giveaway winner, Alex Dredge. You win an Amazon gift card. I'll be messaging you on your channel for details. So the next round of the giveaway will just start whenever I post that Michonne video. But right now, you can click here to learn more about the new characters coming on in Season 5. And you can click here for my top five badass Rick Grimes moments. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tonight. High fives.